morning, everyone. It's good to see you all here today. I was really excited to see many of you at the barbecue that we had last night. That was such a good time. If you weren't there, you missed a real good blast, is the way I described it. So. My name is Carol Hickman, and as a member of the church congregation, I'm happy to welcome you to Millwood Shenanda Church. And today, I'm also very, very happy to welcome our friends, Leslie and Paul Verdon, who will be leading the service today. I know, yeah, this is great. This morning, some of us are here in person while other, others participate live on Facebook. Each Sunday, we gather to share and celebrate, to discuss our sacred values, and to confront the mysteries of life and love. We welcome you regardless of belief, sexual orientation, gender identity, or cultural background. As an affirming congregation, we work to make the church a place where all of us feel safe. We also acknowledge the land. This building in Southeast Edmonton is on the traditional land of Treaty 6 First Nations. Wherever we find ourselves this morning, I hope we will think of the people who have cared for this land over thousands of years. Friends, I'm glad we can be together today. Every day at this church, people join in, reach out, and make a difference. So does anyone have any announcements to make today? Do you? No? No announcements? I have one. A meeting will be held on Sunday, June 26th, so that's two weeks from today, beginning at 10.30 in the morning in the sanctuary to hear and hopefully approve the recommendation of the ministerial search team. This will begin with worship led by the team and will lead into the congregational meeting. After that, we're having a picnic, so you can tell that the service isn't going to be very long. The congregational meeting will end, and then we'll go for our picnic. So if food doesn't entice you, I hope the meeting does. All members of our church community are invited to attend. The meeting will be an in-building meeting only. It will not be live streamed. If it's impossible for you to attend, please contact Rob McPhee at the number that I'm going to give you in a few minutes and we will give you a Zoom link to the service and meeting. Uh, this information will run in What's the Buzz for the following two weeks. We hope you'll join us on Sunday, June 26th for worship and then the meeting. So Rob's number is 780-974-4167 and that will be posted in What's the Buzz. So if you have an announcement that you would like to be heard next Sunday, please let the office administrator know by Friday. And now I welcome Leslie and Paul. Well, good morning, everyone. This is feels like home. <laughs> so we've been here for a while. As we light the Christ candle this morning, we will sing Where Two or Three Are Gathered, and More Voices, number 14. Mm -hmm. Look around and see the faces of those we know and love, neighbors and friends, sisters and brothers, a community of kindred spirits. People of God, look around and see the faces of those we hardly know, 
strangers, visitors, forgotten friends, the ones who need an outstretched hand. People of God, look around and see all the images of God assembled here, in me, in you, in each of us. God's Spirit shine for all to see. People of God, come, let us worship together. As we sing, come, O Holy Spirit, in voices, unite, or more voices, number 23. Stand up, you won't move. Please join me in our gathering prayer. Fit us, O God, for this new day. Through your Spirit, grant us courage. 
so that today's uncertainties may not overwhelm us. Through your Christ, fill us with love, so that differences may not divide us. Through your creative energy, make us new, so the past may not enslave us. Spirit, Christ, Creator, lead us into newness of life. Amen. Well, good morning. This is my favorite time. And usually, there aren't any kids. <laughs> it's just a fact. So I noticed that last week there are kids in this church, but today I don't see any little, little ones. I just see all of us, the children of God. And I'm going to, because I need the mic to do my little talk, I'm actually going to go up there, because, unless somebody wants to come and hold it. No, seeing no volunteers, I will go to the front. I come up here, everybody can see me? Yep. Well, you're going to hear it today. This is called Trinity Sunday. How many know what Trinity is? Three and one. Right. So we, we're all pretty familiar with that. Well, when I got this rope, it wasn't quite long enough. There, how's that? <laughs> it's magic, like a lot of things. So this great big long rope, it wasn't quite long enough for me to make sure that I had three in one. So I decided that I would cut the rope and join three together, because I had three little pieces. And so some of us might think, I mean, the three are God, the Creator, the Son of God, Jesus, and then the Spirit. And through the years, when I was growing up, it was the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And now we talk about the Creator, the Son, the Redeemer, all those different things. So we, our language has changed a little bit over the years. But the real good thing to know is that there really isn't much difference in the three in one, because the magic is, it really is all in one piece. <laughs> so we have three in one, all of us together. Just like a couple weeks ago, we are one in God. So welcome. Oh God, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear what you are saying to us today. Amen. The first reading is from Proverbs 8, verses 1 to 4, and verses 22 to 31. Doesn't wisdom call? Doesn't understanding raise her voice? On the hills along the road, at the crossroads, she takes her stand. Beside the city gates of the town, in the gates themselves, she cries out, Women and men, people everywhere, I'm calling out to you. I cry out to all of humankind. Yahweh gave birth to me at the beginning, before the first acts of creation. I have been from everlasting in the beginning, before the world began. Before the deep seas, I was brought forth. Before there were fountains or springs of water. Before the mountains erupted up into place, before the hills, I was born. Before God created the earth or its fields, or even the first clods of dirt, I was there when the Almighty created the heavens and set the horizon just above the ocean, set the clouds in the sky, and established the springs of the deep, gave the seas their boundaries, and set the limits at the shoreline. When the foundation of the earth was laid out, I was the skilled artisan standing next to the Almighty. 
I was God's delight day after day, rejoicing at being in God's presence continually, rejoicing in the whole world and delighting in humankind. Our second reading is from Romans chapter 5, verses 1 to 5. Now, since we have been made right in God's sight by our faith, we are at peace with God through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Because of our faith, Christ has brought to us to the grace in which we now stand. And we confidently and joyfully look forward to the day in which we will all become all that God has intended. But not only that, we even rejoice in our afflictions. We know that affliction produces perseverance, and perseverance, proven character, and character, hope. And such a hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who's been given to us. Hear what the Spirit is saying to you this morning. May I be blessed with understanding. It's good to be back here again. But it's a little nervous too. Today is the first Sunday after Pentecost, also known as Trinity Sunday. Pentecost has come, come and gone, and we are now in the season after Pentecost. But Pentecost is still on my mind, and I spotted this on Facebook that said, Christmas was God for us, Easter was God with us, and Pentecost is God in us. God and the Spirit in us. Trinity Sunday, the idea and the use of Trinity seems to have been kind of phased out in a lot of our services. I don't hear it referred to very much in the prayers and calls to worship. I know it's very evident though in our various statements of faith in the United Church that it's very much part of our heritage and our forward thinking. In the Song of Faith that was written in 2006, which is my personal touchstone, and I'll be referring to that throughout my sermon, but it opens with this. Grateful for God's loving action, we cannot keep from singing. With the church through the ages, we speak of God as one and triune, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We also speak of God as creator, redeemer, and sustainer. God, Christ, and spirit. Mother, friend, and comforter. Source of life, living word, bound, bond of love. And in other ways that speak faithfully of the one on whom our hearts rely, the fully shared life at the heart of the universe. As I dug deeper more and more about how to explain the concept of the Trinity, the best article I find found opened with, don't try to explain the Trinity. But it's better just to accept the mystery in our faith than to try and analyze it. But if we don't talk about the Trinity or explain the Trinity on Trinity Sunday, what do we have left to talk about? Perhaps this aspect. With the Pentecost, Jesus ascended and the Spirit descended, changing lives for all time and the course of Christianity. And the Spirit can mean many things to many people, but in the Proverbs we heard this morning, the Spirit can be wisdom, wisdom calling out to us. Women and men, people everywhere, I am calling out to you. I cry out to all humankind. Yahweh gave birth to me at the beginning, before the acts of creation. Wisdom. How does one define the idea of wisdom? The one I follow is, knowledge is knowing a tomato is a fruit. Wisdom is not putting tomato in your bowl of fruit salad. Our world is awash in knowledge. We're inundated and flooded and saturated with knowledge every day. We have at our fingerprints, fingertips immediate access to stories and information, history and folklore, our ancestors would have deeply envied us to have. 
I would have loved to have it back in the day in high school. My reports and book reports would have been so much better. It's an amazing resource, and we still use it to watch cat videos. But how do you determine what is real and what is, what is false in the deluge that faces us every day? I know it might surprise some that not everything on the interweb is actually true, but how do we determine between fact and fiction? Wisdom. Wisdom is needed, and quite badly in some cases, to sift through the chaff and come up with wheat. Wisdom applied in everyday life can certainly give us the ability to reject what is wrong and accepting, and, and accepting what is fact, and this could certainly help ease the stress we face every day. And accepting the spirit makes up wisdom can certainly make our road that much smoother through the years. From the Song of Faith again, the fullness of life includes moment of unexpected inspiration and courage lived out. Experiences of beauty, truth, and goodness. Blessings of seed and harvest, friendship and family, intellect and sexuality. The reconciliation of persons through justice and communities living in righteousness and the articulation of meaning. And so we sing of God the Spirit, who from the beginning has swept over the face of creation, animating all energy and matter and moving in the human heart. The scriptures today brought us the joy of wisdom and the message of hope. From Romans we read, we know that affliction produces perseverance and perseverance, per perseverance proven character and character hope. And such a hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Hope and wisdom that has been with us from the beginning and hope brought to us through the Son, Jesus, through the Son Jesus Christ, his message of love and hope, of acceptance and encouragement surrounds us and the Spirit fills us and completes us. Hope is the voice that meets you in the storm and says there, are mo there is more than what you can see right now. As we enter into the season after Pentecost, we find hope and wisdom in our scriptures that can help us through the days and weeks ahead. And again from the Song of Faith, the wholeness of scripture testifies to the oneness and faithfulness of God. The multiplicity of scriptures testify to its depths, two testaments, four gospels contrasting points of view held in tension, all a faithful witness to the one and triune God, the holy mystery that is holy love. Use wisdom wherever you can to keep from falling into the trap of false information and entertainment masquerading as news. Wisdom can help build relationships with friends and with friends you haven't met yet. It can help guide you and your community into the path of reconciliation and right relations. The spirit of wisdom, the spirit of hope, intertwined into, intertwined into the name of the Holy Spirit can help guide us and enhance our faith to live out the word in the world, be it in a small community of faith or in the whole world itself. The wholeness of scripture testifies to the oneness and faithfulness of God the multiplicity of scripture testifies to its depth. Sorry. Embrace the spirit, the son, and the creator by whatever names you are comfortable with and carry your faith with you every day. Grateful for God's loving action, we cannot keep from singing, creating and seeking relationship in awe and trust. We witness to the holy mystery who is holy love. Amen.
Join us in singing from More Voices number 10, Come and Seek the Ways of Wisdom. as each is able, according to the blessings, of, blessings God has given each of us. Thank you to all who give through PAR and e-transfer and share their time and talents as well. All these enable Mill Woods to continue to support and care for the community around us and for each other. Please join me in our offering prayer. Loving God, Mother of us all, may these gifts given gratefully be brought to life through the power of your creative spirit. Multiply and use them. Bring the word and the touch of Jesus to your people in this place and throughout the world. Amen. Does anyone have any joys or concerns they would like to share this morning? Oh, at the back. And while Don is getting the microphone there, I'd just like to say that we had a wonderful time yesterday evening at the Hudson's Place. Many of you were there, and I just want to thank Brian and Audrey, and also Jennifer and Rob for organizing it. Brian and Audrey literally turned their yard upside down and put up four tents, and it was just fantastic, and I really appreciate it. But that tall guy in the corner, you, on your feet. <laughs> that is my middle grandson, the short one. He's not really, he's the tall one. It's his birthday tomorrow. Hi, everybody. I know it's been a long time since I've been here. Anyways. Um, I have uh, celebrated my 63rd birthday on May 11th, 
Um, I also want to keep in my, my thoughts, because it is Pride Week. Um, AJ, um, okay, I uh, hope that everything's going well with him. And uh, my, just to keep in mind, um, my sister is now traveling. Uh, well, she's gone, she's gone through Calgary, but she's going to be away traveling through, through BC for the next five or six weeks. And if you could keep her, in your, her and her husband in your thoughts, because it's the first time since, she, since they've both been retired that they're going that far. Uh, if you could do that. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Please pray with me. We call to mind our concerns and commitments and join our prayers for peace and well-being to the prayers of the whole church as we are offered this day for the whole world. Let us pray. We remember the people we know who are in trouble and pray for healing and happiness for all. We seek God's encouragement for honest trade and just commerce, for medicine and education, for the gifts and aptitudes in every person which serve justice in community living. We pray, pray for peace on earth, for the generous sharing of the earth's resources and the responsible sharing of the Earth's problems for understanding to others, for understanding of others and willingness to regard the diversity of human culture as more stimulating than threatening, for the turning of swords into plowshares and spears into pruning hooks. We pray for the church by all its names and in all its places, for its continuing usefulness as a channel of grace and hope, for its rescue from bureaucracy and stagnation, for its witness to unity and justice, for its commitment to hospitality and compassion. We commend to the Lord our families and friends, and let us ask God to help us in the days of this coming week. Remember those that were mentioned aloud today, those that we are remembering silently in our heart and maybe have lit a candle for this morning. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.
Thank you, that was beautiful. Our closing hymn this morning is It's a Song of Praise to the Maker, More Voices, number 30. has been a pleasure this morning and has been a, an especial pleasure thanks to our musicians <laughs> Wendy and Len <laughs> and Alfreda and Jennifer yeah <laughs> six Bob and Alfreda I did say Alfreda yeah. Alfreda, <laughs> Alfreda, and Alfreda and Jennifer and Len and Wendy there and thank you so much for raising the voices that we needed for today please join me in the closing blessing May the grace of God, deeper than our imagination, the strength of Christ, stronger than our need, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, richer than our togetherness, guide and sustain us today and in all our tomorrows. And as we leave this sanctuary today, join us when we as we sing When You Walk From Here, Voices United 298.